Hello, old Buster coming to you again. Hope uh, everybody's doing all right. You know, I've had a lot of questions, folks, about how this all started. And I call this notes, the beginning. And what they started was about emails to me and Cousin Jesse. And he said, well, you need to write a story. And it originally started with audio, just me talking with no video. And then a friend of ours got into it, had a little radio station down in Midlothian, Texas, said, well, you need to put this on the YouTube. And he said, no, I'll put it on my radio station. And so we started filming them, and Lulu does the filming, and we got a little backdrop here. So I'm going to read how this started. Notes. The beginning. Captain, are you free? Just want to hear them pipes of yarn and lay my papers on your hide. You surely must be a sight for sore eyes. I'm just a saying. Soon. I'm going to hide out at Rosemont for a spell and raise chickens and quail and get some eggs to sell for hard cash. Your mama can make some chicken and dumplings with one or two of them and old hen and I just know they's going to be larping good and dressing too. I bound to get in the melon patch so don't go put no rocks off in your shotgun in my behind. Buster. Here's another. Call hunting. Another note. This was an email. All of them are emails. Has somebody done got little Daryl? Holler up to the house and tell Junior to fetch your sniffles. That bloodhound has just got to find that boy. Get Betsy off from the rack. That there Belgium steel double barrel shotgun with the gold hibbard that'll take down any rascal up to a dirty deed with little dirt. Well, tell all the boys to meet down by the creek and search on the back side of Miller's Swamp. I do mean to let not nary stone go unturned neither. Y'all hear me? Bill, you ride Bell over to the county line and tell them boys and the high sheriff we'll be a-hating up there way in to meet up with us by the old mill. If y'all find anything at all, send up a smoke signal to Engine Joe on Ball Knob and he'll tell us. It's. I guarantee that it will hurt right spark to the fellers that fell on that boy. They had better turn him loose cause if his mama gets a hold of him, they surely will wish they had never come up to Birmingham. Now come alive, boys, and put boots on the ground. Saddle your horses and light a shuck. Time's a wasting. Burning daylight. I want my baby brother found for nightfall and back for supper, and there had better not be a hair on his and hate harm neither. I want them culprits brung on back here alive if they done hurt little Daryl too. Something seems up to no good a little Daryl is off in his and feed and just can't get word to us. Little Daryl is depending on us. Now ride, boys, ride. Well, let me get to the other. This is called Cypher, another email. Well, the boys have done been out for going on two days now. Ain't nary a sound or hiding a hair been found a little Daryl. Mama and the gals, Marjean and Lou Ann, are fit to be tied. A wailing and a weeping and a gnashing of teeth like you ain't never seen. All of them worried about little Daryl. Engine Joe ain't had a sign of a signal and have the boys right on over give me a report during the day and the night too. I am just plum word sick myself. Wondering if he done fell sick summers with his and sugar or if in that winter woman Jessup come plied her affections on little Daryl. Now that boy does have a way with the women folk you know. Y'all know that his and pheromones do a lots of things with them women folk. Gets them all riled. That little grin and him just being plain huggable gets him into a pickle all the time. Me and Mama and the gals all know that it ain't his and fault, but they come from far and wide just to bedevil that boy. But I'm a telling you that widow Jessup just won't take no for an answer. She hates him day and night. Had to sick the dogs on her one night, peeping in the window. I acted like it was a critter outside little Daryl's window and hollered, Junior, get my gun. My gracious, you could see the spark coming off in her shoes when she lit on out. Now, Mama done told little Daryl to pay no never mind to it. and She knowed he didn't mean no harm talking to the ladies, but he had to be real careful like you know. But it sure is hard for me to allow that Winter Jessup could sneak up on him like that because little Daryl is right careful when it comes to her. Now, little Daryl is kind of average size where the rest of the bunch of the family is real good size. But I tell you now, he can take care of himself. 
Boy, can bow up, I'm here to tell you. Just ball up on your head like in a heartbeat. And if you ain't real careful, like I do mean that banny rooster can get plumb bad to the bone. Well, I done see little Daryl pile into a bunch of them Cromwell boys one night when they come by the house of disrespected mama and the gals. They was a drinking and a cussing and carrying on something fierce. Well, little Daryl done told them Cromwell boys to let them be and to hash on up. Well, they wouldn't have none of it because they done a hearing about little Daryl's two sisters being so pretty and all. They come from over the mountain and got all liquored up at the honky tonk and on white lightning. There was five Cromwell brothers and two cousins and little Daryl lit into them boys like a buzzsaw. You ain't never seen the likes. He done got his himself a pole axe and the ones he didn't punch in the nose he whacked with that stick. <laughs> he set them a running and they ain't been back. He throwed mama's egg baskets and sick the hound on his and of, of his and on them boys too. I heard they thought they might want to tussle a bit and start a ruckus with the clan, but that didn't hold no water. I'm here to tell you that. Folks, including the high sheriff, had a little powwow with them and sure enough give them the straight of it. Told them that if they thought the Hatfields and McCoys was a feud, then they'd better think again with the McBrayer Tipton clan would make them look like a Sunday go to meet and social. Well, anyhow, words done got out all over the county now. Little Daryl is a missing. We're a praying for him safe return and won't quit till we find little Daryl neither. Well, Mama done cooked the me up and the boys and the family some biscuits and throwed in some hard tack fed his chicken and dressing and all the trimmings and we're setting out for the long haul. We're turning loose little Daryl's blue tick hound and we ain't a coming home till we get little Daryl. Betwixt that hound a hissing and us a tracking we bound to find some sign. Hissing whereabouts might be plumb across the big muddy but we're going to keep a going even if we have to go to where them little Chinamans live. Mama done told me to find her baby and take care of him too. Your big brother Tiny is a coming, and don't you think for a minute we is a going to give up, neither. You hang on in there like a gator and a pit bull to boot, boot and we'll be there for long. If and it's the Cromwells or Witter Jessup, your sugar, we will just deal with that when we get there. Now don't you fret none, little Daryl. We love you, and we're a coming. Next email. Breaking news, I call it. A missing persons report has been filed with the Mountain Brook and Birmingham Police Departments for Captain Jesse Darrell McBrayer, Esquire. Also, all known lost and found departments in the cities have been contacted to see if he was left there by mistake. <laughs> if found, posters are being put up on every telephone post or window front and gas station in both cities. Search and rescue teams with the cooperation of the Civil Air Patrol are conducting round-the-clock searches across the state of Alabama and surrounding areas. The possibility of international travel is also being considered and all airports, ports of call, train stations, bus depots, and car rental agencies are being checked as well. Family members and close friends have been asked to advise authorities of any known business or personal acquaintances that may have wanted McBrayer to come to their location voluntarily or by force. Please call Buster at BR549 with any information. All right. Other email. APB. That means all points bulletin. Calling all cars. Find Darrell. He is wanted for questioning. Not considered armed, but does have two. Dangerous when cornered. Wears spurs when he bows up at a cockfight. Never has lost. Description will follow. Usually found at a salad bar or jail. He puts them in and gets them out. Judge has ordered a contempt of court warrant. Broke judge's nose with a gavel when he ruled on a car wash to be built next to his house. Judge them nuts would not allow testimony because of his golf date. Was drunk to boot and the girl with the cleavage influenced his decision. Daryl had proof she was a plant from the Littermore Car Wash Corporation. Fried Daryl to the max and became hostile. Ellen Sokovich led the demonstration on the courthouse steps and with Al Dalton yelled at the press that Daryl told him to do it, whatever that was. Upon apprehending the suspect, place in front seat and buy him foo-foo coffee at Starbucks. Chief of Police supports Daryl because his mama knows Daryl's mama and they go way back to vacation Bible school and a quilting beat. 
Firefighters assisted along with the dog pound, dog catchers, to hang the judge in effigy. Judge became so incensed that he dribbled spittle and wet his pants. Governor to intervene for impeachment. Meanwhile, make the Strand Picture Show his holding cell since he has not been and seen a movie in over 10 years. Release on OR when requested. Fine assessed by special judge. One new gavel. Preferably hardened steel. Daryl knows him too and just beat him to the punch. Pun intended. Plus it was Daryl's idea. Be prepared to escort Daryl to the mayor's office for ceremony. He is to receive key to the city and honored with a proclamation for Daryl Day. Do not write report. Notify dispatch and they will issue donuts at the station. All right. These next two little emails are just some things old Buster did when he was off to college overseas. Just kind of give old little Daryl a little joke. Uh, he needed a little joke, you know, instead of the uh, way we was when we was kids. Wake up, little Susie, wake up. Arise, stout-hearted and valiant prince. Destiny awaits thee on yon hillock. The lay and veil of Castle McBrayer readies thy steed for battle of the hordes. Be of good cheer and begat courage from those who came before thee. Beat thy breast in indignation and vow and sacred oath to obtain victory or duel until death. The time is at hand. Mount thy charger and ride to glory. That's a little different, isn't it, folks? This is Lullaby of Angels. It's the last one. All's well at 12.31 a.m. and all is well at 3.13 a.m. as the bell tolls. Please reminisce in my joy upon the titillating oral cacophony and the instrumentation you so proudly possess. My sincerest pleasure is deviv deprivation of the same song utterance of your vocal propriety. Mr. Bell would astutely endear you as I in the adaptation of applied mastery of the freedom of sensual sound. Graciously, I remain at your service, Master Tipton of the House of Tipton. Well, that's how this all started messing around with Daryl. See y'all later. Have a blessed day. Buster out.